right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And here I am in a lovely, actually bright blue sky, sunny San Diego this morning. And I'm joined by uh, Glenn Gaudet, who is in probably a little, uh, a little chillier Boston, right? Cold gray skies would probably be a better description of where I am. <laughs> so, we have, so we have a perfect contrast. There you go. <laughs> and Glenn is the CEO of Gaggle Amp. He's a podcast author, board member. He's also a passionate cook, snowboarder, a yogi, and a dog person. Uh, so uh, you've obviously got lots of spare time. No? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like to spread out my time a little bit. Excellent. Uh, well, I hope you get some good snowboarding in this season, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, me there too. There seems to be plenty of snow around. Yep. Um, okay, so what we want to talk about today is the concept of employee advocacy. And for those of you who are joining us who maybe, maybe you've heard of the term, but you don't really understand what it means, Glenn, do you want to baseline us on what employee advocacy is? Yeah, sure. It, you know, it, it, it's interesting. I, I think depending on from what part of the organization you're coming from, you might look at it a little differently. For, but for the purposes of this conversation, Employee advocacy is really being able to tap in to your employees to be part of your digital marketing effort. And so that could mean anything from having them share some content, but frankly, the more powerful thing to do is get your employees to be part of your engagement strategy. Mm -hmm. So um, because at the end of the day, it's engagement that builds relationships, not just the sharing of content. Yeah, so, um, so, so for a lot of organizations, I can imagine they would say, okay, yeah, that sounds good. Um, now, how do I get them engaged? What does that look <laughs> like? What does that mean? And, uh, and how, do I, how do I energize them so they feel? Because let's face it, today everybody has a digital footprint regardless of where they sit in the organization. Right. And it's obviously a question of how do I, get, how do I leverage that or, or uh, release that to support the company? Yeah, I, I think you have to think in terms of a win-win, right? You want to provide yeah. some value add, not just to the external folks, but to mm -hmm. your employees who get involved in this. Right. And so thinking about it from that perspective, I think is job one, is it's not just about, you know, your view as a marketer or mm -hmm. the person who's running the program. It's also about the people who are participating in the program. So what are, what, are some, what are some of the things you've seen that work uh, to incentivize people to get engaged? Well, look, you know, like on our platform, there's a, a number of things, including a reward system. There's a leaderboard, adds a little competition, a little bit of fun. But, but again, I, I always come back to kind of the with him, what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. So if I'm yeah. in the rank and file uh, employee category, then I want to make sure that whatever I'm doing is also benefiting me. Yeah. Right. So I, I think sometimes it's easy to forget that it's more than just the brand of the company. It's the mm -hmm. personal brand of the individual. Yeah. And when you start thinking that way, you start thinking about messaging a little differently. What kinds of engagements are going to be more value add person to person rather than brand to person or brand to mm -hmm. other brand. And it really changes the way that you think about it. And it really helps you put together the right kind of program for your organization. So give me some examples of that for, for people listening. So say if you're in an organization, say like our organization, right? Yep. You, we have a, we have a mix of people all ranging from software developers to salespeople, whatever. Um, what, when you say more person to person and the right, you know, content for the person's brand, say you're a, say you're a software developer, what would that sure. look like for somebody like that? Um, uh, software developer as a company or software developer as an individual? As, as an individual. Yeah, sure. So I, one of the things that uh, most companies have is uh, they have very subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. So if you're a software developer, you're, you have a certain exp, exp, um, expertise mm -hmm. that you've honed over the years. And so why not leverage that expertise to have a conversation with somebody? So the software developer may not know all the influencers out there in that particular sure. industry, but marketing might, and they might, 
they might ask the software developer to actually get involved in a conversation. Maybe that conversation is taking place on LinkedIn, maybe a blog somewhere. And so you can get that person to really add their perspective, really add value to the conversation. And then you can ask the other people in the organization to share that conversation so it can raise visibility to that conversation. So you're getting the, the, the authenticity of the subject matter expert speaking and you're having that be elevated because the other people in the company want to help that person get some visibility. Yeah, that's a, that's a great example, Glenn, because um, what you're doing there is you're actually, number one, uh, you're acknowledging the employee as a subject matter expert, which let's face it is, is uh, got to make that person feel good. You're saying, yeah. listen, you listen, you've got this expertise. You could help us over here. You're the one right. who can have the conversation. And then you're getting, you know, their peers and colleagues to say, Hey, let's support this and make sure as many people as possible see uh, the great value that you know, employee X is bringing to this conversation. Yeah, I, and, and one of the things that, again, it, it kind of comes back to that, that first principle that we talked about earlier is mm -hmm. it's remembering that all of these individual employees have their own personal brand. Now, yeah. that personal brand may be lacking right now, right? But sure. it's still their personal brand, and it's up to them to decide what they want to do with it. So your job, if you're putting together a program like this, is to be thinking in terms of what are some of the things that can, uh, can enhance not just the brand, but also the individual so that there's that alignment. So we're all kind of going in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I, I think that's a good, really good point. Uh, I, and I think most people uh, want to be seen as having some level of expertise in what they do. So I think obviously promoting somebody and say as an expert and saying, you know, we want your expert input. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's got to, you know, that's got to uh, appeal to quite a wide range of people. And where you've worked with organizations and you've seen this done really successfully, what have, what are some of the impacts being? Uh, the impacts happen in a lot of different areas and even some areas that you, you didn't expect mm -hmm. when you started the program. Um, so some very common things, certainly it has impact with lead generation, right? Right. Because you, you, can get, you, can get, um, you can get your message out there to a broader audience and it rises above the noise. And so mm -hmm. you can actually drive people to you know, a website or something where there might be a call to action and drive some lead gen. There's also the awareness factor. Your share of voice is going up. But I think the biggest thing is when you have your employees actually engaged with their LinkedIn contacts, their Twitter yep. contacts, their Facebook contacts, sharing value-added information and getting involved in value-added conversations, it really creates dialogue between those people, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning the employee and their contacts. And that's what's going to drive affinity for the brand. It's also going to drive um, a certain acknowledgement that these people know what they're talking about. And if I have a right. problem, I should probably talk to them as, as part of my solution. Yeah. And, and, and it's interesting because um, just point to pick up on there because a lot of people think, okay, I've, I, if I just get them to share content, right, which is good, it has its own value in its own way. But every, you know, but everybody's sharing content, and there's content flying everywhere. Yeah. I think the, I think what you're talking about is actually taking that next step and engaging in the conversation and actually turning it into something that has some of it, so a life of its own is, is right. obviously of greater value than just firing off a bunch of shared content. Yeah, and when you help. Uh, your employees understand the kinds of engagements that are going to net them real conversations and engagements back, mm -hmm. man, they, they get excited. They tell other employees how great it is being involved in this program. And mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it really starts to snowball and that's the power of this. And uh, you, you know, one of the things that we, we tell companies who are getting involved with doing an employee advocacy program is, the, the program that you plan for is going to be different 
after 30 days. It's going to be different after 60 days, after six months, because it's going to evolve because mm-hmm. you're going to see some things. Your, your employees are going to, they're basically going to be voting based on what they do or not do as the, as to the kinds of things they want to participate in. And then just on the, on the flip side of it, how do you ensure that they're, is some level of of control or quality on it and just to make sure that you know people don't uh, you know you just don't let loose your 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 employees to go off and do things and they're saying things that aren't appropriate so how do you keep a certain level of um i would not not control control is not the right word but but a certain level of, of quality to it well look it, we have to remember in any of this, there's no way to stop an employee from doing something on social media, period, end of story, right? They Mm -hmm. can do whatever they want. Now you can minimize that by doing very basic things by just putting together a social media policy. Uh, The challenge with most people's social media policy is what they do is they talk about everything you can't do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what they don't do is they don't really help the employee know, okay, here's some positive things you can do. And so when you give people the guardrails, um, if you're using our platform, for example, they're learning how to do the things that are appropriate. So it's really a carrot approach to actually Mm -hmm. help them understand the things that they're going to have impact with, things that they're going to see some value and they're going to see some value come back to them versus the world of don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, right. don't do this, don't do this. Because if I, okay, you told me what not to do, but then I really don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, I think, that's a, I think that's a great point. And it is, I mean, the reality today is, right, that people are finding your brand and finding your organization in so many different ways, in you know, so many non-traditional ways mm-hmm. that... Uh, that really, um, you know, leveraging or utilizing your em- all of your employees is a smart thing to do because you just never know where that next uh, customer could come from. Well, and, and if you think about it, who's got affinity for your brand? If not your employees, then you probably mm. have a bigger problem. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent point too. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, we're coming up against the end of our time here, Glenn, but... Uh, before we go, can you tell people a little bit more about your organization and what you do? Sure. In, in fact, we put together some resources if people are interested in learning yeah. more about employee advocacy. They can go to um, our website. It's gagglelamp.com. And if you go to gagglelamp.com forward slash sales pop, then you will find resources specifically tailored to what we talked about today. Um, but, um, what our, what my company does is we have a SaaS platform that allows you to run highly effective employee advocacy programs. So we make it super, super easy for the employee to participate and we make it very powerful for marketing to run the program. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I think this is going to become a, a, a bigger thing. Cause like I said, I mean, people are finding, your brand in very non-traditional ways nowadays you just you don't know where they're coming from so the more tentacles you have out there i would say the 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 better it is for you uh because if you're just relying on on traditional ways of in of engaging or interacting you're probably missing out on a whole raft of potential potential customers Well, listen, Glenn, thank you very much for putting those resources together. It'll all be included in the description below the video and in in Glenn's bio. Uh, And so, listen, thanks very much uh, for coming, talking to us today. Hope you get a chance to get out there on the slopes soon. Yeah, no, looking forward to it. (laughs) (laughs) And John, thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.